What is going on over there? What are you doing? Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I thought it was time to do a little, I'm stuck at home and I'm sick of staring at all these walls and all the dirt and the dust and the clutter in my house type of video. If you're new here, welcome. Hello, my name is Julie. I post videos all about organization, minimalism, simple living with intention. And I'm very excited to have you guys here and back for a new video. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure that your notification bell is turned on. Give this video a big thumbs up. And with that all said, let's jump into the video. Today we're gonna to be talking about 14 ways. I know it's random. I tried to do five and I came up with 14. Sue me. We're gonna be talking about 14 ways to keep your house clean and tidy and organized daily. So to maintain a certain level of cleanliness and tidiness without doing too much, you know, heavy lifting, heavy cleaning. Honestly, I do the, these things throughout the day in little bursts and it doesn't feel that bad. It's easy to do in between activities and I promise you it works. The first one is obviously to have less things. If you are a regular on my channel, if you've seen, I do a lot of videos about decluttering, minimalism, that kind of stuff. So make sure that you watch that. I have the, my minimalism playlist linked down below and some cleaning videos if you need some motivation. But you know, what I found is that having less things just makes everything so much easier. I was someone who did a lot in my life, both like locally and then internationally. And I would take all my stuff with me like a ninja turtle or like a snail with all my, my house on my back. Honestly, it is not worth it. The more stuff that you have, the more you have to maintain it, look after it, pay for it to be stored, pay for a bigger home to have all your stuff, and it is so much harder. So get into the practice of decluttering regularly and that is gonna help you maintain control of your home so much easier. Random, but keep clean trash bags under the trash bag container, receptacle, that you use. So in our bathroom we have these little trash cans. I would call them rubbish bins. We have these little rubbish bins and I just keep some extra liners for them right underneath them so that it's super easy to remove the old one and put in a new one. Keep DIY cleaners in multiple rooms with a cleaning cloth for that room. So I just have a cleaning spray that's like vinegar and water and some dish soap. Sometimes I add some essential oils. I have a cloth for a particular room. So one in each bathroom, uh, one in the kitchen, one in our bedroom so that I can quickly just spray down what needs to happen like right there and then keep it there so easy. Practice that can be hard if you're not used to it. I think I've just been programmed this way now, but just put stuff back. You know, when you come home and you take off your shoes, put them in the shoe spot. When you take out your earrings, put them in the little dish. You know, don't leave things lying around that is not in their home. Obviously, if you have a home for things, it makes it a lot easier. Come in, hang up your keys. Two seconds, no excuses, saves you so much time. Number five. Oh my goodness, my husband is so guilty of this and it drives me totally nuts. Close cabinet doors, close closet doors, close the door, close the drawer. If you open something and you finish using it, close it. Don't just walk out, leave it open. If you live with someone who leaves things open, <laughs> You'll know what I mean. It is the worst. It is so irritating. Let me know <laughs> if you are the person that leaves doors open or you live with someone that does. Because I think we need to start a support group. Two words, cordless vacuum. Where were you all my life? Life-changing, especially with children. Another thing that I kind of learned to do growing up is cleaning as I go. So as I make dinner, I am continuously cleaning. Sometimes it gets a little extreme and I have to tell myself, just stop, go and eat dinner and we'll clean later. But it saves so much time if you clean up the prep as you go along. Like while you're boiling water on the stove or cooking some rice or whatever it is, you know, make sure that you are just quickly washing the dishes, drying things, putting things away. It'll all add up and it'll save you a lot of time at the end of the night so that you don't have to clean everything for hours and hours and hours. Just little, little bits. This is something that may be considered sadistic, but I don't like having a lot of dishes on display on the counter. I like having a very minimal look to my kitchen. So I no longer have a drying rack for 
for my dishes. I decluttered it a long time ago and this motivates me to clean my dishes, dry them and put them away because they all kind of are awkwardly stacked and there's only a certain amount that can actually fit there. So if you want that kind of look, make it a little uncomfortable to have all your dishes out so that they're kind of all like teetering and balancing on each other so you're incentivized to dry them and put them away. I would also say not having millions of dishes and glasses and cutlery is helpful because if you have an unlimited amount of you know, dishes, you can just keep using them until you run out, right? But if you only have, say, six glasses for a four person family, at some point you're gonna need to wash them. So that's a good way to keep down your footprint, to have less to store, and also to be washing your dishes regularly, not letting them pile in the sink or pile up in the dishwasher. So in the digital world, people are always aiming for a clear inbox. They want their mailbox to say zero. In the same way, I am always aiming for a clear kitchen counter. So that's what I'm aiming for. I don't always get there, but I do really like the look of having a nice clean kitchen counter that is smooth, that's not sticky, that is ready to go at any time. Okay, so feel free to disagree with me on this one for number 10, but I like to do laundry, if not every day, then every other day, because I think it's better to stay on top of the laundry by doing one load every day. And you know, that means washing it, drying it, folding it, and putting it away all in one day, all within like a few hours. I find it so much more manageable than waiting until the end of the week and then having to literally do 10 loads of laundry. Plus, by not having so many clothes, uh, we have to be washing regularly because otherwise we're gonna run out of things. So I like to keep our clothing minimal in terms of how many items of clothing we have. And then I wash every day or every other day. And especially with children, like sometimes twice a day. It works much better for me, but let me know if you're someone who wants to kind of batch your laundry and do it all in one day or maybe twice a week. Or if you're someone who does laundry regularly like I do. I like to clean up, well, no, let me rephrase. I don't like to clean up at the end of the day when I'm tired, but it is often the only time that I can like put away toys and organize the cushions and fold the laundry and put away the dishes. And so the way that I distract myself from these menial tasks that I don't want to do and I'd rather be watching a show or lying in bed or going to sleep or something is I listen to a podcast. I've been really into listening to uh, Instagram lives or when people are doing kind of like educational things on Instagram, uh, I put in my headphones and I listen to whatever they're talking about. I listen to a podcast, I listen to an audiobook, I listen to a video, and then this helps distract me while I do kind of automatic things like folding laundry and wiping down counters. And if I'm feeling really crazy, I can go and like quickly just like spritz the toilet and wipe it down and even vacuum with my new bay, my Dyson vacuum cleaner. Hey, if you wanna sponsor me, Dyson, I'm here. I'm here for you, anytime. Another good practice, although it's so hard, but something that I really encourage you is do all your cleaning and, and you know tidying up and organizing before you sit down to relax. If you sit down, you know, after the kids are in bed and you've got a whole mess of a whole kitchen to clean behind you, it is gonna be so hard to get up and motivate yourself at nine o'clock and go clean the dishes. So just, you know, use the television or whatever you're gonna do as a reward um, to incentivize you to just get it done. Put in the podcast, use that technique, spritz through everything, both of you guys speed clean, set a timer, whatever you need, get it done, and then your reward is to relax. Something else is not like an active habit, but you want to live a certain way. If you want to have a clean and tidy home, if you want to feel more in control of your life, you just have to accept that you're going to have to put some work in it. Nothing in life comes free. Nothing comes without any effort. Obviously these tips are designed to allow you to do minimal effort in order to receive the results that you want. So, you know, that's why I think they work really well because it's small bursts of energy that you need that all add up over, over time. Uh, but you know, it is still work that you are still going to do things that you don't want to do uh, some days of the week. You're going to have more energy on some days, less on others. And the idea would be that if you're mostly on top of your heart, 
housework and being your home nice and tidy and all that kind of stuff, you can actually relax more. You can have more guilt-free TV sessions or whatever it is you want and feel good. Everything in life is a little bit of work. And my last tip is an oldie but a goldie, and that is to have a bag that you are gonna use as your declutter or donate bag. Have as many of these as you need for different categories so that you can always just be donating things that come up that, you know, kids' shoes that are too small, or I, you need to set aside um, some clothes for a friend or whatever it is. Make it easy for you to create this kind of system in your house. Have a declutter bag and it's so easy. Then next time you go to do donate something or you have a community event where people are swapping items and sharing, it's super easy just to pick up your bag and go on your merry way. So those are my 14 tips that I live by to keep my house somewhat organized and tidy and clean. I don't have someone help me with cleaning. It's really me and my husband kind of just, you know, doing our thing and we have two small kids and a dog. So things get messy really quickly if we don't stay on top of it. And I just can't live in a mess. I just can't. You know, inner calm, outer calm denotes inner calm, I can't. So um, yeah, if you guys would like to see more from me, make sure that you join our free Facebook groups. All the information will be down in the description box below. I also have a free mini course where you get sent videos every day for five days. It's super easy. All you have to do is watch the videos. Maybe while you're cleaning, you can just listen to the video. Uh, and that way it can help inspire you to get started on your organization and some simplicity journey. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Leave in the comments down below what you would like to see from me next. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I really, really appreciate it. And I can't wait to see you guys in my next video. Bye.